Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, uh, militia tactics. Um, and um, the situation is that the United States uh, you know, has been invaded by the Soviets and the uh, Cubans. And they're occupying half of it. And we have people caught behind enemy lines that are forming militias to you know, fight the communists. Okay? Of course I'm talking about the movie Red Dawn from the, uh, from the 1980s. Um, so uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the lone operator. Okay, um, uh, one of my followers uh, asked me the question: How would a an individual, um, you know, operate on his own? And uh, my answer is that as a sniper. Okay, or not really a sniper, really more as a you know, uh, you know, a sniper like. Okay, the reason why I say he's not really a sniper because you know military snipers. Um, work as part of a team. Okay, they got a spotter, um, but they, you know, they also have people providing intelligence before the mission. Uh, they have people helping them get, you know, to the uh, to the area that they're where they're going to be operating. They have people uh, that are helping them get out. So snipers really don't uh, operate on their own. They're part of a sniper team. Okay, um, so in this case, uh, we are operating alone, uh, and there's some concerns. Um, First concern is we have a planning uh, problem. Okay, we have to plan the whole mission on our own. We have to gather intelligence um, as far as you know. You know, first of all, you know where and when are we going to attack and how are we going to get ourselves out. Um, so, so that's the the first problem. Okay, intelligence gathering uh, during the uh, during World War II, the French resistance, um, you, you know, often used women uh, for. Uh, Intelligence gathering because what would happen is the uh, the German soldiers uh, would gather in nightclubs and bars um, And you know basically the the French resistance would send women there uh, to get them drunk and get information out of them So uh, you know that was a really important part of the of the resistance movement, uh, you know the intelligence gathering um, Which they they you know oftentimes they relayed that information to the allies. Okay, so in this case, we don't have the benefit of uh, anybody gathering intelligence for us. We have to do all that on our own. And realistically, we're probably not going to do it very well. Okay? Not unless like we're really cute or something. Uh, it's going to be very hard to get the Soviets to give you uh, good information. Okay, That's going to be useful for your missions. Um, so, so that's the first thing. We have a planning problem. Second, we have a travel problem. Okay, um, you know, We have to basically get ourselves... Uh, to the location where we're going to be, you know, doing this uh, this mission, and we have to get ourselves out. Okay, um, you know, there's, we may, you know, I mean, are we going to walk the whole way? Um, are we going to drive ourselves there? You know, you know, you know. Of course, when you're driving on roads, the Soviets own those roads. Okay, so so that puts us at risk. Um, we don't have anybody to help us. Okay, so so we have a we have a travel problem. Okay, um, the next problem. Is that we have a one shot problem? We can, we can only take one shot. Uh, the re the reason is because the second shot will give away our position. Okay, um, you know, in this area where I'm at, uh, people you know often hunt, and uh, a lot of times you know when somebody's hunting, I'll hear one shot, right? So when I, I'll hear one shot, and I'll look up, and I, I really don't have a good sense of what direction it's it's in. But if I hear a second shot, right? Because let's say they only wounded the animal, um, when they make that second shot. I'm usually able to narrow it down to it's this way, this way, you know. So I'm able to narrow it down in, in to at least one of four directions, okay? If there's a third shot, I can usually narrow it down to somewhere between, you know, 10 and 20 degrees. I can say it's it's this way or that way or that way. Um, so, so by the third shot, I have a very good idea of what direction they're in, okay? So um, for that reason, we're limited to one shot. And uh, the problem with one shot is we're really not going to do a whole lot of damage, okay? Um, you know, it, it's not enough. To, we, we can't lay down any suppression fire. Okay? In, in, in prior videos, uh, we talked about using the, uh, the L ambush, right? In the L ambush, let's say, you know, we set up an ambush. Okay. All right. And with the L ambush, we, we have the benefit of overlapping fire. So, you know, everybody's firing forward and maybe a little bit to the side. Okay, so this guy over here, and let's say if we got a guy over here, he's firing that way. Okay, so so we have overlapping fire um, that, that, you know, and if they all got a 30-round magazine, and in the prior video I said that uh, they're all going to basically dump 
one 30 round magazine uh, within two minutes you know that's a lot of rounds that they're putting on target um, a lot of those rounds are gonna hit things they're gonna hit people um, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna force the Soviets uh, to start thinking about uh, self-preservation okay uh, they're gonna be thinking about you know getting behind cover they're gonna be thinking about uh, you know taking care of their wounded they're not immediately going to think about a counterattack. okay um, so that's the benefit of putting a lot of fire now eventually they will start thinking about a counterattack. Um, you know but but it will you know they they need time to think about that so that's the time that we're gonna use to get out of there uh, if we if we have a single person okay, so we got a single person okay, he takes one shot um, you know, regardless of whether he, he gets a, a kill or not, um, the Soviets are going to start thinking immediately about, about getting this guy. Okay, they're going to start thinking about, you know, outflanking him. They're going to start thinking about uh, possible escape routes. Okay, so, you know, I mean, great, this may all be a forested area over here, but there may be, you know, roads. I mean, um, at this point, you know, in the 1980s, right, um, you know, most places in the United States, um, you know, even even if it's a, um, you know, even if it's a forest, okay, because I basically live next to, a, to next to a state park, there's still roads that run through the state parks, okay. So so basically, what the uh, what the Soviets are going to start doing is, okay, where are the roads? Okay, you got a road here, and they're going to start patrolling those roads and trying to uh, to basically box our lone shooter in, okay, because. Because that one shot that he took um, was not enough to, to get them to think about staying behind cover. Um, you know, he didn't do enough damage where they're just thinking about, okay, let's just take care of our, our wounded. Um, so, so that one shot it was really not that effective. Okay, so, so our lone shooter has put himself at, at great risk. Um, and for it, he's, he's really had a minimal success. At best, he, he, he killed one communist. Okay. Um, so, so that's the problem. That's one of the problems that you know. Even if the mission is successful, okay, we're, we're taking a great risk, and at best we just got one shot. We really can't take more than one shot because it's going to give away our position. Okay. Uh, second, we have an escape problem. Again, because we didn't put down enough, we can't we can't put down enough suppression fire to get ourselves out. The Soviets are immediately going to start thinking about a counterattack, about pursuing us, about cutting us off, about encircling us. So, so it's really hard for us to get out of the area. Uh, we're probably on foot. We're gonna probably have to travel a good distance to get to, uh, you know, if we got if we if we drove in with some type of vehicle, we're gonna probably have to travel some good distance to get out of there. Um, and you know, the the Soviets are going to really quickly gonna be able to be, basically dominate all those surrounding roads. Okay, um, so so we have an escape problem. Okay. Um, then we have a hide problem. Okay? Even if we do get out of the area, um, where are you going to go? You're, you're not going to have a network of safe houses set up because you're operating by yourself. I mean, at best you have, what, maybe two or three possible locations. Um, and, and people are going to see you. Okay, uh, You'll be seen. Uh, the Soviets are going to start asking a lot of questions in the area. They're going to start really pressing uh, people. Um, and and don't think that people won't give you up, okay? Because um, what's realistically what will happen is that you know initially when the Soviets come into the area, uh, there's going to be some serious food shortages, okay? Um, and at some point they'll start letting the food come through, uh, and people will realize that the food comes from the Soviets, um, and and basically the Soviets will use that as a currency. Okay, anytime they want something, they'll cut back on the food. You want a little bit more food, you know, give us some more information. So people will, um, you know, will sell you out really quickly. Uh, again, we saw that uh, during uh, World War II uh, when France was occupied. You had basically almost half the country was collaborators. Okay, uh, people were more than willing to to work with the Germans. They basically accepted them as the new reality um, and uh, you know and and they really had no you know a lot of people had no trouble uh, turning in uh, you know resistance fighters or, or, or you know um, you know they had no problem uh, cooperating with the Germans okay so so that's a reality and um, 
you know, even if we look at um, the American Revolution, okay, um, a lot of people think that during the American Revolution, you know, all the colonists united uh, to fight the, uh, the British, and that's not the case at all. About 30% of the colonists were loyal to the British, I mean, extremely loyal to the British. Um, about 40% did not care one way or the other, okay? So right there, you have about 70% of the, of the population uh, that would have been more than willing to turn you in, okay? Uh, and then the thirty percent, right, that supported the um, the uh, you know the the American Revolution, um, you know, it's questionable as to how far they would go to actually um, you know protect an individual. Okay, um, my guess is that if the British came into a house, they pointed a bayonet at somebody's chest. Um, it would not, you know, they, they probably would have given the British whatever information uh, the British were looking for. Uh, there's probably a very tiny percentage, okay, that, that you know, would have been willing to even accept a beating, um, you know, without, without give, you know, without giving the British whatever they wanted to, okay? So that, that would have been a really tiny percentage. So, so um, you know, so basically we have a hiding problem. Uh, people are going to see you, they're going to see you moving around. Um, you know, you know, in any given area, um, you know, people kind of know each other, especially if you're moving around during an occupation, you know, people know when people are out of place. Okay. So, so, so again, we have a hiding problem. Next, we have a supply problem. Okay. Uh, where are we going to get our supplies from? We don't have a network to supply us. Um, so, you know, you're going to go out, you're going to try to get some supplies. Well, how are you going to buy your supplies? You're not working because you're a, you know, you're, you're a loan operator. Um, so, so again, these supplies are also, you know, your, your attempt to resupply yourself. Uh, and I'm not talking about getting more ammunition. I'm just talking about getting food and, you know, basic stuff that you need to live on. Um, your attempt to resupply yourself is, is probably going to, um, you know, help in giving you up. Okay. Um, and then lastly, we have a security problem. You know, again, like I was saying earlier, you cannot trust anybody. You cannot, even if you're part of a militia, you really can't trust anybody. Uh, and if you go back and you look at the first uh, video that I did about the L ambush, I mentioned in that video that, you know, uh, if you have, a, let's say, a militia of, of 10 people, anybody that loses contact with the militia, like let's say we send somebody out to get some supplies and come back, when that person comes back, we have to assume the possibility that that person may have been stopped. They may be compromised. Uh, he may have been questioned. Um, they may have taken his family in and are holding them for ho you know, hostage uh, and forcing this person to provide some information. So once somebody leaves a, a militia group, um, they can't, you know, I mean, there's a limit to how far you can trust them. So, so that has to kind of be baked into the cake. You know, if you have a, a militia group, um, I, you know, anybody that's uh, providing information to the militia, uh, that's providing supplies to the militia, to the militia. Uh, again, we have this security concern, uh, but because let's say you have a 10 man team, you, you, you know, you have more resources, um, uh, you know, to, to try and, uh, to work around that security situation, okay? You know, working as an individual, okay, uh, you, you really don't have anybody, okay? So, so anywhere you go, everywhere you go, you know, trying to basically resupply yourself, um, any one of those people can give you up. Uh, people are going to see you moving. Um, you know, if you try to, you know, if you're trying to collect, you know, intelligence, right? If you're trying to gather information um, on your own about, you know, how the, uh, the Soviets are, you know, moving through an area and so forth. Again, you'll you'll be seen. People will see you at that location, um, and eventually, you know, the Soviets when they question the people, that somebody's going to give you up. So, so we have a security problem. So, uh, these are my thoughts on that. On operating, you know, um, as a, I'm, I'm working as a loan operator um, in a in the um, uh, you know in the Red Dawn uh, alternate reality universe. Uh, and if you guys have any alternate ideas of, about how an individual um, would be effective, uh, please put it in the comment section. Um, you know, my thoughts is that he's a lone individual uh, will have a very difficult time uh, being effective uh, for, the, for the reasons that I listed here. But I'm definitely open to new ideas. Uh, perhaps you guys have some other idea that I had not thought of. Um, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. See you next time.